6,000 cases, 9,000 suspected cases. What do these numbers tell us at this point? Do you think uh, the outbreak has reached its peak yet? I doubt it. Uh, I think it's going to be have another at least a couple of thousand cases um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think that is the most optimistic uh, number. I mean, we may have more than that. The virus actually has been spreading just within a month, and then it's up to six thousand now. So I mean, that is, and we didn't, we did not see any sign of stopping this uh, of this virus being stopped uh, the transmission. So I would expect that would be still a long way to go. Now, let's talk about a vaccine. Researchers in Hong Kong, they say they've developed one, but they still need time. They need a lot of time. It could take months, even a year before it's uh, fit for use. So can you tell us why does it take so long to develop a vaccine? And by the time it is developed, isn't it too late? Well, I mean, um, this is a matter of safety because uh, we may have some basic idea about what, how we should use the vaccines. But then, since this is the new virus, so would that... Uh, would actually create additional harmful effect to the patients or even to, I mean, to the individuals, normal individuals. And then that actually is something that we are not so certain. So that's why we have to test them in primates and then humans and just check for the safety aspect. And before we talk about whether this is actually effective or not. So it will take time. So, and so, I mean, it won't be available in, I mean, in weeks. It will be talking about 10 months. Just think about the pandemic 2009. We have the seasonal vaccines um, we've been using routinely, and it still takes us 10 months to put it available to public use. And so uh, I would expect that even if we have uh, effective vaccines experimentally, it will take a long time to actually put it in a human. Now, scientists on the mainland, they're also trying to develop their own vaccine, and reports are saying it's something called an inactivated virus vaccine. Can you explain in layman's terms, how is this approach different from those vaccines being developed elsewhere? Right. And what they did is uh, try to culture a group of these viruses and then make it a high concentration and then try to use some detergent or some chemicals to inactivate this virus and, and then use it as a vaccine. Um, so hoping that uh, by injecting this inactivated virus inside our body, they can generate some antibodies which can able to prevent the infection. So what about uh, finding new treatments through existing drugs that we have available right now? Some reports saying researchers are trying to use, for instance, antivirals that are being used to treat HIV. Is there a potential in this, in this approach? Right, I mean, there's a potential. Um, experimentally, we know there's a couple of hit uh, drugs that can able, or at least have some evidence to show that it works in the cell culture level or even in experimental animal lab models. So, I mean, this may be the drugs that would be useful. But uh, again, um, we need to actually do a, a very sophisticated uh, clinical trial to confirm whether these particular treatments or drugs is effective in controlling uh, the disease or not. So, again, um, we need some clinical study to demonstrate the evidence. And let's talk about food supply. Uh, we are seeing reports that Guangdong is calling for an inspection of all food that's being shipped into the province. Uh, is there a potential for this virus to be harbored within food? Should we be concerned about that? Right. I mean, I think the, the major transmission mode of mechanism of this virus from animal to human is basically via the life of our animals uh, in the market. So um, that happened in SARS, that happened in, I, I, I would believe, in Wuhan uh, causing this particular outbreak. So uh, I think that is the major source of the virus. I mean, uh, for normal routine food, um, I doubt whether we were able to find this virus because uh, there are a lot of previous studies showing that uh, even animals have their own coronavirus. And then we never found this type of coronavirus in our, our normal meat, like pork, uh, kettles, and, and I don't think we were able to find this virus in this food. So, um, again, um, it would be nice to actually do some study and just to make sure that um, we that ex just try to exclude this remote possibility. Uh, but I, I personally think having properly cooked the food would have a very little risk uh, of having this disease. All right. And before we linked up with you, uh, we were reading a headline saying that scientists on Australia announced they're able to replicate the coronavirus now in a laboratory, and they called this a significant breakthrough. Can you explain why this step is so important? Right, because um, so far, that I mean, before this news, um, we only know the virus by genetical sequence. Uh, so basically, we do not um, 
able to actually tell the biological property of this virus. Uh, if this virus isolate, we can characterize it in cell culture. So basically, we can tell how far this virus being able to replicate in cells. And we can also use this as a model to try to use drugs uh, and see which, which drug will be able to inhibit the virus replication. And then on top of that, uh, we can use that for serological tests um, then to tell um, which patients actually have been infected but they did, did not develop uh, clinical symptoms. So basically, basically, we are talking about asymptomatic uh, patients. So uh, there's a lot of things that can be done with this particular virus, isolate. So um, that will be good for scientific uh, uh, research, clinical treatment, and also for uh, epidemiological studies. Speaking of asymptomatic patients, we know the incubation period is about 14 days, which is longer than the incubation period of SARS. Uh, what would you say is the best way to stop the spread of this virus in communities? Do you think that limiting travelers from Wuhan right now is still the best approach? I think, uh, first of all, SARS uh, also, we do have some patients that have an incubation period up to 14 days. So, I mean, um, uh, uh, so, I mean, don't don't assume the SARS uh, uh, actually is, uh, have a we develop clinical onset much quicker than uh, this current coronavirus. Now, talking about the uh, preventing this disease being spread in the community, I think early identification of these patients will be critical because um, we can still prevent these virus being circulated in the community. Of course, restricting the people coming to uh, from uh, Wuhan to other places help to prevent the spreading disease. Basically, we are buying time so that we can come up with more effective control measures uh, to prevent the spreading of this disease in the community.